It's a simulation and it just started. We're going to concentrate on this aircraft right here. You see Continental 260 at the top? Number on the lower left, that's his altitude. He's at 4,000 feet. The last two zeros drop. Over on the right, MD-80, the type of aircraft, 26, his ground speed in knots, 260 knots. I'd like you to listen carefully to the first command the controller says. It's the easiest to understand. Channel 260, descend and maintain 3,000. Descend and maintain 3,000. Pilot must repeat it. Listen to this one. Descend and maintain 4. Two directions here. Continentals 4862 heavy, flooding 150, descend to 5,000. Fly a heading and descend. Everybody, listen to the second of two commands here. And Continental 260 heading 190 and join the localizer. Fly a heading and join the localizer. Did you hear that? What's the localizer? You see this line? This line represents an invisible highway in the sky. It sends out an electronic radio signal the pilot's been told to join. That's the localizer. In just a second, he's going to call out to Jetlink 3311 and then say three incredibly fast things at 260. Jetlink 3311, flooding 150. Listen for the last of three. Here we go. Channel 265 from the Adams Reader established, cleared ILS 22 left approach. What was the last thing he said? Anybody? Cleared ILS, instrument landing system, 22 left approach. Now he's been told do more than just join that line, visualize a funnel. Now he's been told to fly right down the center of that invisible highway. You with me? Once the controller sees he's established on the localizer. Now 260 contact the Newark Tower 18.3. Piece of cake. What did he say? Contact the Newark Tower on a frequency of 118.3. Why? Controller sees he's established on that localizer. Now he wants to hand him off to the next link in the chain. In this case, control tower. He's switching frequencies now and announcing Newark Tower. Continental 260 is with you on final. Everybody, one of those three words that every pilot loves to hear the tower is going to say back to him. You are. Aren't those lovely words <laughs> cleared for landing? But approach is going to keep him on the screen till he gets to that tiny little circle. That's called the outer marker. Anybody ever heard that? The outer marker. At that point, He's less than five miles from the end of the runway. If it's a beautiful day like today, the guy in the tower to look up and see him, he'll probably clear the aircraft for what kind of approach? Anyone know? Visual. A visual approach. Watch this as 260 flies over the outer marker. Up on the flight deck, they're hearing an audible signal that's getting louder. He's over it right now. Coincidentally, approach is going to drop him from his screen. He no longer belongs to approach. Who does he belong to now? Control, control tower. tower. They'll stay with him until he lands. They'll tell him. Continental 260, a right turn to the second taxiway, then contact. Ground control. They'll lead him right to the gate. Safe, orderly, very efficient. That's our air traffic control system. Do me a favor. Everyone, please say, wow, for the camera. Wow. wow. <laughs> How about some questions about air traffic control? What kind of training do they, do they have to do? Well, number one, you've got to be absolutely insane to be an air traffic controller. <laughs> but you do have to enjoy controlling people. Yeah. Okay, but basically what we expect people who want to be controllers, the best way to go is to one of the CTI schools. That's Controller Training Initiative. There are two-year programs. Embry-Riddle has a very well-known program. But a lot of colleges have two-year CTI programs. And they'll prepare you for the ATSAT.